All right, welcome back. Uh, hard to believe it's already September. Feels like the summer went really fast this year, probably because it wasn't actually quite as hot as prior summers. So I'm starting the uh, September walkthrough actually inside here at my grow, grow light rack because that is where all the interesting stuff is really happening at the moment. This here is the entirety of my fall and winter garden. Um, have a nice selection of cool weather crops going, uh, various root veggies, turnips and beets, and then greens, shard, spinach. Um, I've got, of course, you know, broccoli going. Uh, here my beans are starting to come up. I'm going to try to sneak in a quick crop of a bush variety of green bean before the frost. Also, I have my peas starting to come up. I'm trying to give everything at least a one-month jump on um, uh, everything before actually putting them in the ground outside, get them up to strength uh, so they're not as vulnerable to depredation and pests and other environmental factors. And we will see how this all goes. Usually uh, the overwinter garden I plant does okay, but because, you know, lower light, lower temperatures, things just tend to grow real slow through the winter kind of providing a very slow, but steady uh, supply of vegetables. All right, let's take it outside and see what's left out there. All right, we actually have a few uh, lingering San Marzano tomatoes that haven't ripened, but for the most part, these plants have given what they're going to. Um, uh, the, <laughs> think back on it, I planted these uh, in mid-January, so these have been alive for quite a while, and they've done really well for us. Um, a little bit of blossom end rot here and there, but, um, you know, not as bad as uh, some of the other uh, paste and sauce variety tomatoes we've tried. I'm going to give these uh, another week or two, see what ripens up, um, and then after that it's not really worth the, um, the space that they're taking up, and I really have to get some of these beds ready for the, uh, the fall crop. The uh, the one indeterminate uh, cherry variety, cherry tomato variety I still have going is this uh, Sun Gold. And I figure why not leave this to the last minute? You know, we're uh, getting, you know, st still a fairly steady supply of salad tomatoes off of it. Um, uh, again, I'll probably, I'll probably make the call October 1st is really the bed that it's in. Um, I want to devote this to greens this winter. So, um, you know, I'm going to be in a couple of weeks. Uh, taking this out no matter what, even though it could probably live and um, provide some tomatoes probably well into November. Um, but um, one of the unfortunate realities of having a small garden space is you can't, there's just not enough room for all things at all times. So when something starts to dwindle, um, a lot of times you have to kind of call it. Um, this is encouraging though. This is a... Um, a new variety that I hadn't previously tried. Um, it's simply called Patio. Um, it's offered by uh, Botanical Interests. And what it is, it's a, a dwarf variety of um, uh, cherry tomato. And it is, for its size, actually it's proven to be fairly prolific. Um, it produces these kind of, um, I don't know, a little smaller than a golf ball sized um, yellow cherry tomatoes. Um, and actually I have a little footage. I cut the first one of these open, um, just a little while ago. So we just had the first two of our, uh, new to us patio tomato variety ripen up. They're the two yellow tomatoes there at the bottom. Uh, on the top, I have a, a sun gold and a black cherry tomato, just kind of for reference and scale. Uh, uh, these are a fast yielding uh, dwarf cherry tomato variety. Uh, the package says that they yield in about 45 days. I seeded these oh, sometime in June, so uh, yeah, I, I guess we're about there, maybe a little over. But anyway, I just thought it would be interesting for uh, anybody who's into tomatoes to uh, see what these look like on the inside and then uh, do a, a quick taste test. So I'm going to cut one of these open here, move some of this stuff out of the way, make room. All right. That looks pretty good on the inside. Uh, 
I haven't ever tasted these before, so this is all new to me. Not bad. Um, it's not quite as sweet as a, uh, a Sun Gold, but I've yet to encounter a tomato, any other tomato that is. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't had them. Um, but it's, it's very sweet, maybe a little more tart, maybe slightly uh, more acidic than the Sun Gold. Um, and about on par acidity wise with the, uh, the black cherries that we've been getting this year. All right, here we have some of the late season tomatoes that I started. Uh, I believe I started these indoors in late June, and early July, and I planted them outside in July, um, to replace some other plants that I had pulled out. And these just aren't doing as well, um, as the ones that I started in January and planted out in April. It could be for a number of reasons. Um, I'm for one I'm planting them into I planted them into a hostile uh, environment you know they, they didn't have time to kind of warm up with the environment I put them right out in the hot summer sun um, and you know that's plant stress and uh, tomatoes are unfortunately very susceptible to heat and water stress which is is common um, in the in the midsummer here in Sacramento uh, this one here um, I don't know if that's going to quite show through, but there are, there we go, uh, a couple of, a handful of, of really nice looking um, aroma tomatoes on this one. Uh, not all plants have even done this well. Some of them are pretty sickly looking. Uh, the other thing that could be going on is the beds were depleted of nutrients. Um, and, you know, perhaps my fertilization efforts weren't quite uh, adequate, um, you know, after the, you know, original supply of nutrients and biomass had been kind of used up. Uh, what it did uh, allow me to do was try out a potential uh, blossom end rot remedy in a foliar spray of a uh, fertilizer called uh, calcium nitrate. And the idea is that you just kind of mix it in up into um, uh, a solution and then uh, apply it to the leaves for absorption absorption that way or leaves and fruit and uh, I'm not convinced it's actually doing anything um, I'm not noticing any uh, reduction in blossom end rot compared to what we saw on the uh, the first crop of these aroma tomatoes which unfortunately are very prone to blossom end rot which is a shame because the, to the tomatoes it does produce are, are beautiful big and uh, almost seed free, which is what you really want for a, a sauce tomato. Uh, these beds here, I don't know if I am going to bother planting anything in the winter. Uh, everything kind of along the, the southern border toward the southern fence here just doesn't get a lot of light in the wintertime. So um, I might let the plants just leave these all alone here let everything do what it's going to do um, until frost kills everything off. Same for the, uh, the bell peppers here, which are still producing. Um, and then I'll probably plant a, a nitrogen fixing cover crop, um, like uh, just some clover or something to keep the beds vitalized and recharge them. Uh, well, it's not really getting enough sun for anything I want to eat. I'm pretty psyched about these. Uh, my second round crop of tomatoes maybe aren't working out so great. But this is the second round crop of bush variety uh, butternut squash. Um, it's branded by uh, Burpees as uh, Butterbush. Uh, and these are taking off. I started these in, uh, I believe, I started them under grow lights in uh, very late July. Planted them out in mid-August. Uh, and they're, they're doing great. They're taking off, getting bigger, um, almost seemingly daily. So... Uh, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to get some fruits out of this, uh, this second round here. Um, you know, unless we get some kind of super freak wicked early frost, uh, uh, I don't see why they wouldn't. Could slow down, of course. Again, um, already noticing the effects of shorter day length here in uh, early September. Uh, shorter days, just slow growth. Here's my uh, butterbush squash slash sweet potato bed one of them anyway the other one i've already started to uh, take apart and i'll be harvesting the sweet potatoes within the next week or two the um, squash in this bed are doing great i'll probably 
pick these, harvest these as soon as I'm done here with the shooting this uh, quick walkthrough. Uh, sweet potatoes are doing really well in this bed. I'm encouraged there's some pretty big tubers actually sticking up here through the uh, the ground. Um, I've had mixed results in the past with sweet potatoes. Um, either, um, you know, we get a lot of like tiny wispy little tubers and roots and often not a lot in the way of, you know, good um, big fat tubers that you want to bother with peeling and cutting up. But it looks like uh, there might be a little more success this year. So I'm going to let these go uh, for another a uh, couple of weeks and then grab a pitchfork and get them out of the ground. And this plant was a neat little surprise. It initially produced one of these uh, orange hybrid squash. Um, I'm guessing it's the result of cross-pollination between a, uh, um, a sweet meat Hubbard squash and um, one of my golden nugget bush squash. Um, it's kind of these squat orange uh, like they almost look like a little mini Cinderella pumpkin um, they're, and they're not bad to eat either. So again, these are about ready to be um, harvested and then I can get this plant out of here um, and turn that into compost for the next season. So that's really all there is to say about the garden at this point. It's kind of a transitional time right now. Um, most of my plants have either died off completely or they've produced what they're going to produce for the season and are honestly kind of just taking up space. Um, I really can't complain about this uh, year's spring and summer garden. We got quite the harvest. Um, the last I checked, uh, we were up to about 400 pounds of fresh produce from our small little backyard here. Um, and that's nothing to scoff at. Um, I always want to try to do better. You know, it's kind of a game to see, you know, if next year I can, can up production even a little bit more and, and put away, you know, some more um, canned and frozen food for the winter. Uh, but I'm pretty, uh, pretty psyched moving into the fall season here. So stay tuned. This is the last you're going to see of uh, the summer garden. Uh, next video, all of these plants are going to be gone. Much of the vertical structure, the shade cloth is going to be gone and everything is going to be in a, a completely different mode. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, I know I'm a little rough and DIY at this point, but I do appreciate the uh, the people who've stuck around and, and seem to uh, enjoy what I do.